Hey Deckers, Hell Divers 2 is here and it's less hell diving and more hell of getting it working on the Steam Deck. This is not running in game mode at all right now, thanks to this weird and protect anti-cheat which we've never heard of before, but is apparently the number one anti-cheat for multiplayer. Let us know in the comments below if you've actually seen this in any other game before. But to run this in game mode, you will need to download a specific Proton version and that will be GE Proton 747. Now we've seen people tweet online and message us about 749, but that didn't work for us for some reason. Whereas 747 is working just fine. So if you need to know how to get that, check out the custom GE Proton versions guide in the description below. But once we've got that set up, unfortunately, like I said, it still doesn't work in game mode, but it is working in desktop mode. And in desktop mode, the best settings that we found are to set this to weak camera shake length, ultra quality render scale, and full screen on the display side. And then on the graphic side, start with the low preset, bring the motion blur all the way down to zero, turn depth of field off, and the sharpness around 0.6 or 0.7, depending on preference. Then we're gonna tweak the settings a little bit here with the render distance on high, shadow quality on low, particle quality on medium, and then you have to scroll down with the right analog stick. It doesn't auto scroll, which is very annoying. Then we're going to put vegetation and rubble density also on medium and turn anti-aliasing on. Now this for the most part will give you a pretty steady 30 frames per second and it's a pretty good looking 30 frames per second at that. Now there's so much hecticness going on in this game that I don't think you're going to notice a huge amount that it's not 30 frames per second especially as the quality isn't quite as high as we would like on the small screen. And especially as we've got a quick time actions for pretty much everything in this game to calling things in to actually extracting and activating things in game. And even the navigating the map feels like a bit of a mini game or a quick time event because you've got to quickly open it and scroll around before it disappears again. Overall, it's an interesting game. I'm not quite as hyped as I was on the build up to this one. If you like Starship Troopers, then this is definitely a fantastic game in that genre. Although I do still feel that Star Trek Troopers Extermination is a little bit better, but that's maybe because I'm more used to the first person. Overall though, it does hold that 30 frames per second for the most part, even when there is a lot of bugs and a lot of explosions, although you can see it does dip under that 30. But as I said, you're going to be more inclined to try and stay alive than watch that frames per second. We'll see, it'd be good to see just how the frame time was behaving, but overall it didn't really feel that jittery and was actually quite solid on the deck. As I said, there are tons of quick time type events on this and a two minute extraction time playing on your own is like a chore. Fortunately, they have patched it recently to fix multiplayer, although the first game that I managed to get into, it disconnected me after a couple of minutes. So hopefully they get the multiplayer fixed on this because playing solo is really, really difficult. And this definitely isn't a single player title. Let us know in the comments below if you're gonna be diving into this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.